friend of mine, Paul Johnson, said to me one day, he said, Jesus saved God for me. And I think what he meant by that is, like you said, you fell in love with Jesus. Then you had to figure out what to do with God. Yeah. yeah. If all I knew about God was the Old Testament, I'm not sure I'd care for him much. <laughs> but Jesus came along and said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the conversation today started out about uh, a Bible yeah, study. Really. That's right. Yeah, our friends in Point of Grace, Lee, Denise, and Shelley. Shelley, I learned, had had this really significant discovery through the Bible of grace by doing a Bible study for a year. Just not doing a Bible study, but studying the Bible alone. And so we wanted to sit down and talk with them today. Some about growing up in the Bible Belt, talk about the Bible itself, and then talking about discovering grace throughout life. So let's join the conversation. But last year when we uh, did a show together, when we were on the plane ride home, this was kind of the first time, Shelly, I think you and I had actually mm -hmm. had any conversation together and we were talking about the Bible. I don't even know how it came up. I don't know if you said... Maybe she was reading hers. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, she, if I was <laughs> flying... <laughs> if I was, she was reciting hers. Well, oh, he's, yeah. got, he's got it memorized. That's right. Yeah. Oh, God. All were you, were I you? always say if I'm flying on a plane, that's probably what I'm doing. <laughs> so, but you started to, we started to talk about the Bible in our culture today, even in church culture, outside of church culture, is an interesting, sometimes controversial, I think it's always been a bit of a controversial subject, the inspiration of the scriptures. But you were telling me how in the past couple, two, three, four years, from a Bible study that really prompted kind of a change mm -hmm. in your perspective about the Bible. And I was interested in what that change is. You know, did it affirm some things? Did it completely shift some of your perspectives about the Bible? Or did well, you even care <clears throat> before that? No, I mean, I was raised in church, <laughs> but I think I have the story, the same story that a lot of people have, which is, <clears throat> you know, you go through Sunday school and you learn all these different stories, mm -hmm. like, Noah and you know Jonah and you, mm -hmm. but but how they all really connect and and tell the greater story that you're still a part of. I mm -hmm. think sometimes falls by the wayside, and then you get mm -hmm. into this adult life and you think you're. I mean, I remember being in, you know, Point of Grace in those first years and just going, oh my gosh, we're in front of all these people. I hope nobody. You know, if, we got, if I had to do a Bible drill, I would be like, so. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You thought the was going to ask you to do a Bible drill. <laughs> Where's Hebrew? Right, we're back here. That's we're funny. jumping off. I was like, I mean, I believe in the, the, the awesome resurrection show. and all that. Yeah. But, but like, I didn't feel like my biblical knowledge was was very good, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um. <clears throat> We we did this, we I kind of happened upon it, but it was the Lord I'm looking back. And this Bible study at my daughter's school, and we just did like a chronological, this is what I was mm -hmm. telling you about, the mm -hmm. chronological read through of the Bible, because it's not exactly in chronological order, right. close, mm -hmm. but right. you know. Right. Um, and the way the so, books are so much like right. Job would be first. <laughs> is that right? right? You mean, you mean, what do you mean? You mean historically not, speaking? Okay. Historically speaking. So it speaking. jumps all around. Not, no, not, not what much. order it was written just, in, right? But what No, it's not actually, the order it was written in. The order in which it occurred, okay. historically. Okay. And so, but that was really just a small piece of it. I mean, it's pr it's pretty much in order. They, they keep a lot, some of the stuff together. Sure. For, Tell us the big know. piece. But that's not wild, and so, you know. Right. No, and so <laughs> it just really, that to me, just starting at the beginning and kind of understanding what, you know, the purpose of like, the Levitical codes and holiness was, and that was set up. It was kind of like the Jews were set up. It was the great farce. That's what I always say. Like, you know, they didn't know. I never right. really knew the whole story of the Jews and the Levitical codes and how we can't be that holy and there has to be a justice scale and, you know, just all of that. And, and then then that's why we needed Christ. Like I just, the thread oh, was yeah. never yeah. really Ooh, there like for that. me. You know, that thread through, and then it just awakened my faith so much because I'm like the thread's still going, and I'm, I'm part of it. And you're part of it, yeah. And, and that, so that was which really... sort of is like the Bible's still being written. Is mm -hmm. that what you mean? Well, no. I mean, I think it's been done, but God's story. God's for story sure. is still My being written. Yeah. Yeah. written in our yeah. lives, right? absolutely. And our experiences. But yeah. that so the thread thing that kind of is what we've talked about. How you filter, you know, so many people and it's have a red the Old thread. Testament. Mm -hmm. Yo, the blood of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Oh, that is, Amen. I like that. That. I'm feeling a song. <laughs> kitschy, kitschy. Yeah. Song. <laughs> we've always told we were told we can have a relationship, and I believe I do. Yeah. Through Christ, 
But you have, I mean, what's that like, look like, a relationship with God? How do you get there? How, do, how would you tell someone to have a relationship with God? So I think it's challenging. I think Jews in general struggle with that because not having an intermediary. I mean, I have mm-hmm. a very good friend who's a, who's a, a minister and... Uh, you know, she's like, yeah, like Jesus is my buddy. I'm like, right, I'm right. like, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah. You know, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, so Jews tend to, I think, at least in America these days, talk less about God. Okay. Um, I think the way that we have a relationship with God is by following commandments in the in the Bible and the mm-hmm. Torah. Okay. Um, you know, there's a famous passage, you know, just as I'm merciful, you should be merciful to your fellows. And so a lot of it ends up manifesting, I think, through action toward others. Um, There's, of course, you know, prayer, which is a pretty central piece. Um, And that, I think, for a lot of Jews, I think it's challenging. Why do you say it? Why why is it hard? That might... Well, you're talking, but no one ever talks back. Uh, Okay. So the mysterious so that's, nature of God. Yeah, that's at least for me, you know, you can see yeah, I'm having a whole conversation, but right. You know. Yeah. You don't ever know if you get a response. So I think that's Well, that's true. That's true I for anyone. I've never yeah. had God's never spoken to me audibly or anything like that. I mean, I I I've seen nothing. I, you know, bad Pentecostals, they get all the miracles. Baptists, uh-huh. we get nothing. Uh-huh. We have to walk by faith. So, okay, but that, if, if you see a thread of Jesus, which is, I think, as New Testament Christians, that's who we most closely identify with when we, in our relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Because sure. Jesus well, is us, uh, you well, know, sure. is experience this. Right. So if you see that the thread throughout, then it kind of opens. It's a gracious, mm-hmm. more generous way of reading, right? Totally. And so the Old Testament, though, that's where everyone... It's like, Mark, you've said, what about the Old Testament? I, you know, my mother could keep the law better than anybody. And I yes. could break it better than anybody. <laughs> and I needed grace. And to me, sometimes, if you look at the Old Testament without the lens of Jesus to look mm-hmm. through, mm-hmm. it'll make you mean. Even the Bible itself says of itself, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Mm-hmm. Correct? Mm-hmm. So I think that um, it just looked to me like sometimes I'd tell mama, it looks like God was in a bad mood <laughs> yeah. right. until Jesus right. showed up. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's a question based on that then, which I, I think you're going to, head's going to spin, but... Um, <laughs> uh, so God, is it possible that God, okay, so he's all-knowing, all-powerful, but to be all-powerful, someone explained it to me this way, for anything to be all-powerful, he must be able to also limit himself. That if you can't limit yourself, then you're not actually powerful over yourself, right? So maybe part of God's limitation was Jesus. Like he put on skin. He limited his, you know, omniscience and, and all powerfulness yeah. to be able to relate to us. Okay, so that's where I'm going with it. Okay. Okay. But is it possible that God in the Old Testament, bad mood God? Oh dear. <laughs> is, is it possible that he could actually evolve in an effort to be real time like instead of just create everything and let it spin so that we're just puppets is he actually living in time and space you know because we see these things in the old testament where it does seem i'm not saying this is what happened seems god is a bit flexible even with well he repented that he made man on the earth that's in there that looks like he changed his mind uh, which I don't think. It but means do we he, really understand what he was he re- saying? Well, I don't think it means he repented that he made man. I believe he repented that he made man on the earth because he said he did. But what does that mean to him? And also, could it mean that here he is? He's God. He sends Satan to earth to keep him here. You know, when the angels fell, and then he decides to plant his crown in creation in the middle of a war zone. Us. So perhaps he repented putting us in the middle. You know, I don't, who knows. But he does say, whatever repentance is to God, it said it. He divorced Israel in Jeremiah 3. God went through a divorce. God couldn't pastor a Baptist church. He's been through things we've been through. (laughs) And that's so he can relate. Even in the Old Testament, I think he was trying to relate to us. But so finally he... And I don't think he came to himself. I think he knew before the foundation of the world. So I would disagree with I you. Would say I do not believe so. God is evolving. Okay. Mm-hmm. I believe the revelation of God is like a crescendo. And we are learning who he really is. And it apexes in Jesus. 
Moses learned there was one God. That was big news. And he got some things right and some things wrong. He said, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, back in that day, you knock out my teeth, I'd go kill your whole family. So he made it equitable. And then Jesus comes along finally and says, no, you've heard it said, eye for an eye. Mm. But I tell you, and Jesus trumps the Old Testament. Mm. Jesus trumps Moses. And he's got the better way, the best way. Forgive, love. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't, yeah, and when you say Jesus trumps the Old Testament, I actually like to think of it as he fulfills the Old it, Testament. Yeah, right. I like that better. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I do because too. a lot of people these days will try to go, mm. well, the law, the law is gone and it doesn't matter. The moral law never went away. Right. Just the, the moral law, the ceremonial law is gone. You know, we... You know, we can yeah, eat yes, shrimp. We can eat shrimp. <laughs> That's ceremonial I, law. Okay he came that, to break but... the ties of the ceremonial law. But we can a lot mix of our clothing. Try to mix the ceremonial law and the moral law together. Does that make sense? Yeah. What is the moral law? I'm just saying anything that has to do with the heart. Well, really, if you, shrimp, if you look, look at the, the Ten heart. Commandments, the Ten Commandments is the moral. It's, yeah, and I, know. I heard a pastor say that day, and I really loved this. And I, I guess I've known this, but. The Israelites, you know, they, they had been living with Egyptian rule. They, they did not know moral codes. I mean, Egyptians, you know, you cut people. I mean, you know, murder you, you murder. Who cares? No, you live the way you want to no live. So nobody knows. And so that grace, that law that he put in, it was is to go... You know, don't don't murder. Hey, yeah. hey, y'all, yeah. don't murder one another. <laughs> love hey, love your neighbor. Be kind. It's more fun that's not, that's <laughs> not <laughs> mean. The law it's, was a babysitter till yes. Jesus yes. could show up. Yes, you but know, we look at his crowd. laws like, oh, you know, it's, it's, he's so harsh. I think there's only me, ten. Oh, but then Moses came along and added 611 more. Well, yes. Well, love the that. Lord your God with all your heart. And so I'm like, if you, or if you just do that, so you're following. Is, 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 that that like the, is that the origin of legalism then? Like when Moses added all Oh, the, we've always it? been trying to get back under the law. We love rules. We yes. love... Are you talking case. about the Levitical codes? I'm talking about the 613 the, laws. Is that Jewish laws? The Levitical the, codes? I, the shrimp? I uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know yeah. what code it is. But yeah. I do know that it, God gave him 10 on the on the mountain. And then Jesus had an eleventh one before he left. A new command I give you: love your neighbor, not not love your neighbors yourself, because he'd already said that. But as I have loved you, will you love your? Because he realized after working with humans for three years, we don't love ourselves. So he backed up and said, "Okay, as I have loved you." Mm -hmm. And he said, "This is a new command. This is number eleven. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have written that down." Dinner conversations is presented by Project Beautiful. I have so many emotions right now. I'm so excited. I never thought I would get an opportunity like this to change my life. I'm from a small village outside Kathmandu, Nepal. I've never left the area. Now I'm going to leave the country. I love my community, but it's so hard to find a job. And my family is very poor. Now I have a chance to change that. A few weeks ago, a man came to our village offering some girls jobs working at a clothing factory across the border in India. At first, it sounded too good to be true, but he showed us pictures of the factory and the apartments we would be staying in, and I would be able to send most of my paycheck home to my family. If I can do this even for a few years, it will make a big difference for my family. I had to accept his offer. I took a bus to Kathmandu to meet the recruiter. We purchased my tickets to the border. What am I doing? I'm traveling to a country I've never visited for a job that I don't know how to do. That was arranged by a man I just met. Desperation makes you do crazy things.
I'm almost at the border, and a woman stops me. She separates me from the man who I think is helping me. I'm nervous. I'm confused. She asks me if I know the man I'm with. I say no, he's a stranger. Then they ask him how he knows me. He says, "She's my cousin." This scares me. She tells me stories of girls like me, who were tricked, and the bad things people did to them. I don't want that to happen to me. She helps me get back home. What if the woman at the border had not been there to stop me? Where would I be right now? If you go to projectbeautiful.org/slash/dinnerconversations, you can find out how to partner with us in bringing home vulnerable lives today. If we don't help, who will? Project Beautiful, because every life is beautiful and worth fighting for. Do you yeah, divide the like laws this. like that? Yeah. No, we yeah. don't. Okay. No. So, so it's we. It they're the all law. under one. Yeah, under and it's, I mean, it is a debate, but in general, Judaism says. They actually have a number, 613 commandments. Right. Okay. Um, there are 613. And they're all equal. And we distinguish, um, one way to break it down is between positive and negative commandments, meaning you shall and you shall thou shalt not. not. Right. Um, so there's lots of things that you should do, celebrate the holidays. I mean, all that stuff, which is so much a part of uh -huh, um, yeah. Judaism and the calendar is barely covered in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> so isn't it interesting yeah. that we, that Christianity is so into this grace, the freedom that we receive through grace, and we are so stiff about some and things. And they show it. Like yeah. ce our celebration, we don't know how to celebrate our spirituality. We really don't. Mm -hmm. if you, I mean, I think we know in reverence, I think we sometimes through liturgy, just like yeah. any tradition. But as far as like in just relationally yeah. i don't know yeah. if we fully understand you know we hate to drink you know we hate it. like everything that's good about it comes from the earth right. and we and can't stand to partake of well that's and judaism you know it's like no wine is here yes. wine is at every celebration yes because it's meant to be a conduit for joy and you know that's, it is oh sure that's under yeah Trust under me. <laughs> marriage ceremony yeah. and like i mean that's you know the most that's how you start shabbat is with a blessing over wine well that's jesus right. turned water into wine baptist turned it into grape juice it's a shame. It's a shame. It is a shame. So many of my friends and so many of our friends grew up with this major toxicity of scripture where, mm -hmm. you know, it was used to browbeat, it was used to, to manipulate control. and control. How do we help those friends and how do we help even ourselves? Because I've still used scripture against myself. Um, how, how do we help actually see it? How do we take out the, what I always say, take out the mom and dad issues, mm -hmm. you know? So take it, go work on your issues with mom and dad so that we can rediscover God for who he is and what he's saying. How do you So the first question that? is what? <laughs> what, what, what? Well, what's your experience what's your has been? Yeah. What's your history? How has it grown with, with you over time? <laughs> I did grow up and I'm very grateful. I did not grow up resenting church, Me resenting. I, 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 loved I loved it. my foundation of of church and, and our youth group was great and mm -hmm. you know all of that but still we I still somehow feel like I you know missed it along the way I still wanted to be that good girl like mm -hmm. I worked so mm -hmm. hard to be that good girl this is what it looks like to be a good Christian girl you know and so and again we like the rules like I want you to tell me how I think how I should think what I should do it's more tangible, I can right? do that like you know yeah, but yeah, to deal with uh, my jealousy of somebody else or to deal with, you know, I don't, you know, I just, I just need to be a good girl and do these things. And so that was, you know, even though I feel like looking back, you know, I had a relationship with Christ and, and a sweet one and stuff. I still, for the longest time, till literally my 40s, have, did I deal with, this is what it, it looks like I worked so hard to do it right. Um, you know, and I guess, you know, God's gracious because in your forties you start like, I don't know, in twenties, thirties, you're young, you can yeah. like do it. And yeah. then in the forties, everything just starts falling apart a little bit. You know, you can't quite handle all the balls that you're juggling and stuff. And so at that point I began to really deal with, okay, why am I so, you know, upset with myself and all that stuff. And I came to realize that somehow I had added rules. Mm. Jesus loves me, period. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. For the Bible tells me so. The first song I ever sang. Right. First, but somewhere along the way, a lot, I put... He loves me if. If I do this. Mm-hmm. If I look this way, he's going to be, you know, he <laughs> thinks nicer of me. And I want to please him. And, you know, I'm a people pleaser. And I just finally came to rest with, he loves me. And as I've done that, scripture for me has become so much sweeter because I know the tone of voice. And I maybe it's having oh, yeah. teenagers, I yeah. but the I love my teenagers. It's the tone of voice. Like mm-hmm. I read I read something no, that says, did. you know, um, may the words of your mouth, meditation of your heart be pleasing to me, where I used to be like, okay, oh, yeah, I gotta I gotta zip it up. Yeah. It's like, no, sweetie, if you if you are kind to people, if you, if you don't yep. say yep. what you want to to your husband sometimes, yep. if you'll <laughs> Yeah choose to not say that and so you're choosing life in that relationship you know when it when you look at these little things along the way you know it says don't don't aggravate you know parents don't aggravate your children and sometimes I go oh my teenager I just keep nagging away at him I'm (laughs) nagging away and God's just going look I'm showing you right here just ease off a little and show you know and he's a lot nicer than they told us yes (laughs) To the sunlight with your windows open. Don't hold in your anger or leave things unspoken. And wear your red dress, use your good dishes, make a big mess and make lots of wishes. And have what you want, but want what you have. And don't spend your
Dinner Conversations is presented by Project Beautiful. Did you know for only $30 a month, you can save three people a year from sex trafficking around the world? Just think, if this was your daughter, wouldn't you be glad someone is spending $30 a month to get her home? Go to projectbeautiful.org slash dinner conversations and join Andrew and me as we try to stop sex trafficking in the world today. If we don't help, who will? Project Beautiful, because every life is beautiful and worth fighting for. I used to say growing up, I didn't know anybody that didn't know Jesus and love Jesus and live for Jesus and have him in his heart. I didn't know anybody. Yeah. So I would say for me, the scripture, I still would go back to the fact that as far as understanding just that whole thread of God moving, or re God being revealed through my life, it's, it's still, I mean, even to this day, something was revealed to me today through his scripture. Yeah. You know, was it so, when we were talking? It was, yeah. Uh, she said the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I also, you know, you talk about, I wasn't a wife. 35 years ago. So the dripping and nagging in Proverbs that, you know, uh -huh. I didn't know how that scripture didn't come to life for me until it was my experience. I was a dripping faucet. I drove my husband crazy. <laughs> Drip. Yeah. Drip. I mean, so, Drip. so, so the scripture comes to life as it, as it's a part of your experience. And for me, for me, yeah. when I had the courage to share a part of my story to my family and they exuded God's grace. Huh. Oh, grace was woken up. Really? And oh my gosh, I walked different. I spoke different. I lived different because I never saw the hand, the feet, the eyes, the arms of God's grace until, until the lies were released, truth was revealed, and what truth brought me was grace. Do you mind defining grace? Because uh, I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. For Jews, it's not a concept that is like particularly important or resonant. I mean, we talk a lot about gratitude. That's what actually like, to God or to... yeah, but like the word Jew comes from you, Judah, which the name comes from being gra grateful. Mm -hmm. um, but grace is actually not something. It's not a concept. It's not a concept that is you know, that comes up a lot. So I'd love, mm -hmm. and I know it comes up a lot in the Christian world. Well, well how grace would you and mercy, you know, the definitions of grace and mercy, right? Is it mercy, God? This is very elementary and basic. But is it mercy withholding what we deserve and God, and grace is giving us more than we deserve? That's a very, like, basic way to apply that those terms to mm -hmm. other yeah. things. It's like when a police officer pulls you over, he doesn't give you a ticket, he gives you an ice cream. Cup. Right, right. That's... So that's grace. <laughs> that's grace. Yeah, it's it's like literally, literally offering you something that you've neither yeah. earned or right. So that's what we and that all is filtered in my experience through through uh, the work of Jesus mm -hmm. dying for our sins to save us to to offer us salvation and and what is salvation for me? That's us being offered back into relationship with reconciling us back to mm -hmm. God in spite of our sin. Uh -huh. So grace. That's all grace to me because I don't believe that I could have done anything in my own flesh or own. There's nothing I could have done in my understanding to attain God, to reconcile, to bridge mm -hmm. that gap. Here's God, most holy God. Right. Here's me, sinful Andrew, but created by God to be right. in a relationship with God. Right. So then grace is what is Connects. the connective tissue. Hmm. I mean, we tend to believe that, you know, people are created good and, you know, have their faculties and have strengths and weaknesses and maybe have challenges that they can overcome or, mm -hmm. or, or not. Um, but it isn't that you're, you know, starting at a, from a place of sin. There was an original sin. There was original virtue. In the Garden of Eden, they were virtuous, right? I mean, there was before sin. Right. We were and sin is so. infected. We were infected with it. You know, we're all walking in all the light we have. I love that you said that and earlier. That was great. you can't walk in light you don't have. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what helped me forgive my mother for not keeping up on the grace issue. Mm -hmm. she, she'd say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go crawling in on my hands and knees. I said, not me. I'm kicking the door in. And say, ain't y'all glad I'm home? <laughs>
And she said, if I get a crown, I'm going to lay to this feet. I said, not me. I'm trying mine on. <laughs> I mean, how rude, mama. So you go to a party. You, do you go to a party, it. someone hands you a party hat, and you throw it at their feet? Right, right. You know, being facetious. And that's the reception of grace. But that's I will ever more give God I the glory. I love that, yeah. I remember one time we were leaving a Gaither concert, and I, you can edit all this out. We were leaving a Gaither concert, and I'd already pushed the buttons. I knew what buttons to push with her, and they're all theological. All, we never Gloria argued. or your we mom? My mother. Okay. We never argued about anything but the Bible. Because uh -huh. we loved the same God and couldn't agree who he was, really. I mean, on, on, his, on his temperament. Uh-huh. So I did, I don't know what I said. She finally swung around, looked at me and said, are you even saved? <laughs> and we were not even out of the parking lot. And this wow came up in me. I'd never experienced it before. And it was falling out of my eyes and I couldn't stop it. And I said, mama, I have loved him since the day you told me his name. Mm -hmm. And if he sends me to hell, I'll go there praising his name because that will, wear, that will be where I fit in the best because he's always had my best interest at heart. And I'll praise him because mm -hmm. I, I trust him that much. I mean, I think I do. Mm -hmm. I haven't got to that point where I would, he said, Mark, you're going to hell. And I go, oh, thank you, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Oh, I think that would you know, I, that might be oh. hyperbole. I do tend to live in hyperbole a lot, but I trust him. But there's yeah. a, surrender, Any, a true surrender. Anybody yeah. who loves you enough to die for you is yeah. on your side. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I don't fear him. I've heard somebody say that the older I get, the more I realize how far apart I am from Jesus as far as understanding him because mm -hmm. he reveals himself and he reveals himself and we just realize, oh my gosh, how did I miss that? Or thank you for, thank you for your gentleness. I mean, the fruits of the spirit, he wants us to have them because it, it makes a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you're gentle towards someone, when you have self-control towards that sweet man I've been married to almost 25 years, you know, there's just, we we should know better. We really should. But give yourself grace too. But I can give myself yeah. mm -hmm. grace. I can I can wash this in some nice Tide or Gain, whatever, New Day, and His everything's mercy's so okay. every And then, then I'm thankful. Because we wear them out every day. We just, <laughs> we just, oh my I word. mean, it, yeah. Sometimes by two or three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And then you got to go sit in the corner in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> you got to, yeah. when's this sunset? Oh, like, I, I say on my journey, I, it was all about legalism at first, but it was great. I mean, I just got, I didn't know anything. I had a mama who loved to sing and loved God and, but there were a lot of rules. I'd hear preachers preach 1 Corinthians 11, 14, doth not even nature itself teach you. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. <laughs> that was one we memorized, like John 3, 16. <laughs> oh, Mark! And uh, I wonder why God gave his chosen people. I'd have given them all Hawaii. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> if I was Hawaii. gonna give my kids something, it'd be Hawaii. <laughs> How are they going to get to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? How are they going to get there? How are they going to get there? 600,000.